one second, let me get a little drink of this palm water bottle. I'm just going to pop right This Q&A is brought to you by Palm Wonderful, actually. So, uh, let's go ahead and open up the questions. Anybody? Yes, sir, right here. I want to hear the story uh, with May and Tail. They didn't pay, but they got an awesome spot. The story with May and Tail. He wants to hear the story with May and Tail. They didn't pay, but they got an awesome spot. It's fucking May and Tail. <laughs> it's a shampoo and conditioner that is for both horses and people. <laughs> if they say they're in and they don't pay, how do you say no? I mean, especially when you pitch them a ridiculous idea like that and they go, great! That sounds amazing! The, actually, the one line which I wish we could have used in the film because it was so garbled on the, uh, on the recording, she goes, that's the best integration I could have ever thought of! <laughs> amazing. So that's how they got to be in for free. I mean, but here's another amazing story about Man and Tail, which uh, I'll tell you, hold on, let me Prayer, the greatest sunglasses you'll ever wear. Um, so when we made a tale, ultimately, when we, when we made the film, said, no, no, we're just going to be in the film, we're not going to do any promotion, we don't really want to do anything, you know, you can just put us in the film, that's it. And then when they saw the film at Sundance, and saw the response from the film at Sundance, they were like, what can we do? What can happen? What can we have happen? Like, can we put, like, bottle tags in the bottles? Can we, like, you know, have giveaways? And I was like, yes, we can do all these things. And then literally I got a call last week, where they were like, Morgan, you want to come to the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> And I said, yes. <laughs> I, said, uh, I said, do I get to have like shots of me with horses and mane and tail? And they said, absolutely. And I was like, I'm so there. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Like, they have so embraced like, the whole idea of what the film's about. It's remarkable. Yeah, who else? Yes, sir, right now. How do we get away with not giving brand sign-off? How do we get away with not giving brand sign-off? That's a great question, because it... Uh, because ultimately that was like one of the biggest battles is they wanted to see the film, they wanted to have final sign off of the film and so what we agreed with them was that they would get to see the film before theatrical release not all of them, but some of them like there were probably three or four of the bigger brands you know, that gave us the most money wanted to see the film before it went into theaters and so we were like, absolutely, absolutely then we got into Sundance and they were like, well we want to see the film before it's going to Sundance like, well we're not finished yet, it's not quite done, not yet, not yet and uh, I said, but you'll see it before it goes into theaters I said, Sundance is just a film festival <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about a film festival? It's, like, it's not the release. Like, so what you should do is you should like have all your people come to the film festival and see it there. It'd be a much better place. And you, then you can actually like see it with an audience. And so they were like, okay, okay, we'll come, we'll come. Because the last thing I wanted was to have a bunch of like people sitting around like their conference tables with their lawyers, all going, how bad do we look? No, we, oh my god, this is a terrible thing for our brands, terrible thing for our company. And so literally, 11 of the brands that are in the film came to Sundance, saw with an audience that had a reception that was probably about, I'd say, 40% as good as today's reception. <laughs> today's reception was infinitely better. Um, but, uh, no, it went incredibly well. And, uh, and so then afterwards, they were ecstatic. They were great. And so all the other brands that didn't come to Sundance were like, done, we're in. We completely are on board. So, uh, let's go up uh, for deck. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a good question. He said, just we were talking to Tarantino, he was surprised there wasn't a discussion about the brands he makes up. Which he and I did have that conversation. Is, um, you know, like, he makes up a of, like, a uh, pack of apples, like the apple cigarettes and all the other things that are in his film. Kevin Smith's another one who does that. He, like, really creates a world in which his characters live from the places they work to the products they use, etc. And so, no, he and I had that conversation with him. We tried to fit that into that amazing, like, exchange between J.J. Abrams and Peter Berg and and uh, Brett Ratner and, and Quentin Tarantino, but it was just one of those things where it just fell out of place in terms of what they were talking about, but you know, it's gonna be a great DVD extra. It's gonna be amazing. As is, by the way, in terms of great, the greatest DVD extra, the commercial that I pitched to Palm, oh. will be on the DVD. We well, already shot it, by the way. It's already done. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, I mean, for me, the film ultimately is a film that looks at the world of, of branding, advertising, marketing. Every day we wake up, we're being sold something. We're being sold something by somebody, and at the end, even me. I'm trying to sell you something. 
trying to get you to come to this film, trying to get you to come see it. And what is ultimately at stake is understanding all those things that are in your life and at play every day, everywhere you go, no matter what it is. If somebody wants you to buy this drink, that shirt, those pants, that car, whatever it is. And I think being aware of that from the beginning, whether it's in film, television, in an elevator, at a gas pump, is ultimately the most important thing. And I think the film does a great job of really bringing that to the surface. And what this film's done for me is completely ruined film and television for me forever. So congratulations. <laughs> film and television will be ruined for you forever. You know, every time you watch a movie, every time you watch a TV show, you're literally going to be picking out all those things, which at the same time, I think is a great thing. Because now you'll start to understand literally where someone is trying to sell you something within shows you like, movies you love, characters you, that you're a part of. And, so, and for me, it's like, I, I realize we live in a world that has brains. I don't want to see somebody drinking, like, you know, beer. You've seen those movies where they have a white can with beer on it, and it's like, who the fuck drinks beer? <laughs> Nobody drinks beer. It's like, remember back when they used to have, like, the generic beer? Shit tasted terrible. Nobody drinks that. <laughs> like, like, it's a, even if you had no money, you would save up and get, like, you know, like a natural light. You know? It's like, you're like I'm not drinking that. That's like a terrible beer. Um, like, it's, but so for me, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's recognizing that we do live in a world where this is real, but it's not about oh yes, and have you had a drink of this? You know, it's like, that's, for me, it's, it's, we're smarter than that, we're better than that. I think the people who advertise and market and put those things in film and television should try and do a little bit better in, in everything they're doing. They should literally let, let the creative people be creative people. Let the people who write movies and TV shows be the people who write movies and TV shows and don't force them to put that stuff into, into their program. And I think that's a, that's a huge thing. There's some people I want to bring up down, downstairs. Before. John Vaughn right there. Come on down. John Vaughn is the guy who got us banned the owner. If it wasn't for Van, none of the movie would have happened. Who knew that Van Deodorant was the linchpin? Because literally, it was ridiculous. People were like, Van Deodorant's in? Absolutely. I'm in. That's incredible. I'm so, I, guess that's really I want somebody else in the upper deck. Yes. Yes. At the very end, all we know is total it was 1.5. Do are you listing anywhere how much individually each um, each brand paid? Uh, that's a great question. We should do that. We should do that on the website. Absolutely. I love that idea. Um, I think uh, Palm ultimately committed a million dollars, and they only paid six hundred thousand because the other four hundred thousand, as you saw, were tied to tied to certain benchmarks. Yeah, that we had to achieve of certain things. Um, who else paid a, a lot of money? Yeah, please, this is Jeremy, my producing partner. Jeremy, tell us. Hello. Well, I, mean, I totally agree with you. The way that it was pitched and the way when you see JetBlue, you see uh, Hyatt, you see Palm, they were all pitched in kind of a tiered system. So 1.5 million was entirely raised through all the brands that contributed to the film so we could actually make the movie. Now, like Morgan said, when we you know, have 500 DVDs, when we have all those media impressions, then there are incentives for us, so as Morgan exploits himself, and, if you will, force himself out more, then Hyatt, JetBlue, and Mini Cooper continue to pay more money to us in the attention. No, I'm sorry, not having Mini Hyatt, JetBlue, and Palm Sheets. Palm, 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 and Sheets. Yeah. Yes, Sheets as well. The best thing about this film, which is ridiculously remarkable, is that we've made a, uh, an independent film that from the day it opens in theaters is going to be in profit. <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Did you turn anyone down? Did we turn anyone down? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, literally, I called, here, here, just to give you a quick story. So I called every ad agency, every, every no ad agency wanted anything to do with this. Not, not one ad agency, with the exception of Kirsch Bon Bon. Which, but here's the thing, I didn't call them, here's the thing, I didn't call them until after I called the product placement companies, and I was like, why didn't I call John Richard? I was like, I didn't even call those guys. And I called them up and they're like, absolutely, we'll help you. And then suddenly they get banned, and then like, there it was. They're, they were the guys that made it happen. One agency out of every advertising agency that we called helped us. And it's these guys. <laughs> Only one. Only one agency. No product placement company would help us. We start calling every, every single, you know, car company you saw in the film. Every beverage company. Every fast food company. How can you have a documentary blockbuster? How can you have a blockbuster? Without like a fast food, like documentary toys, think about those. The kids are gonna be eating those. <laughs> They're gonna want those so much, like those little documentary action figures. It'd be incredible. 
And so, so we tried to get a fast food chain. McDonald's, of course, didn't call me back. Big surprise. <laughs> Burger, King, Burger King wanted nothing to do with the nope. Taco Hell wanted zero to do with the movie. With In N Out Burger in LA, I called In N Out. I was like, come on, In N Out, this is perfect for you. Wanted nothing to do with Wiener Schnitzel. My, it's like, Wiener Schnitzel? You're fucking saying no? You're Wiener Schnitzel. You have nothing but upside in this. They're like, hey, they wanted nothing to do with the film. So then that's when we said, well, okay, fine. We can't have it there. If you're going to have collector cups, then let's go to like a 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven wanted nothing to do with No Circle K. None of the people. No, no. Like, what is the other one? Dinosaur. What's, what's the gas station that has a dinosaur on it? Whatever that is. Like, what is it? Sinclair, yeah, those guys, they wanted zero to do with this. And so then we said Sheets, you know, because Sheets was in West Virginia, so I said we should we'll call them. Those guys loved it from the minute, like day one, although they still don't trust anything we're doing. <laughs> Spectacular. And, uh, but they are, literally, when the movie comes out, April 22nd, there will be documentary collector cups in every Sheets in all 400 locations. <laughs> by you guys. Like, we ultimately still need your help to help us, like, achieve all the benchmarks and everything we need. And hopefully you like it. Hopefully you'll tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. You know, you'll phone a friend, blah, blah, blah. You know, who wants to be a millionaire? Whatever it takes. And, uh, and so, yeah, the, you know, if, you, if you're a writer, write about it. If you're a blogger, blog about it. Um, if you didn't like the film, don't do anything. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, but please, uh, yeah, please share it with everybody. Yes, sir? Uh, one year from now, are you drinking palm? One year from now, I'm drinking palm? I have forty percent hope so. <laughs> way up top, there's a girl way in the background. Is this the last one? Last one. You are the last question, so make it good. And if it's terrible, I'll have to pick somebody else. Uh, what advice would you give for independent filmmakers to get more people to see their films? By the way, wasted on the young at 9.30 in the Ritz tonight. <laughs> Young tonight, 9:30 at the Ritz. You didn't hear that. Tell your friends, tweet your buddies. The most important movie tonight after this one is Wasted. What is it called again? Wasted on the Young. Wasted on the Young, 9:30 at the Ritz. I encourage you all to go. That is the product placement we had in the balcony. The, uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you my quick two cents of what I tell filmmakers all the time. Young filmmakers are always coming to me and say, "What should I do? You know, what advice can you give me?" The greatest advice I give the young filmmakers is, "Don't quit." It, it's so, it, this is such a hard business. It's such a hard business to get your foot in the door. It's such a hard business to get any type of traction in. And it's so easy to give up. And ultimately, if it's your passion, it's what you love to do, you can't stop. You know, you have to keep making films. You have to keep telling stories. You have to enter your movies at every film festival you can. You have to get everybody you can to talk about your films. You have to get them out any way possible, by hook or by crook. You have to, like, you know, you know, I literally, when, before we made Super Size Me, I like got every credit card I could. I was two hundred fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. You know, literally, but like before we made that film, just to keep my production company going, to, to keep the dream alive, I was evicted from my apartment and sleeping in a hammock in my office. But I still had an office. It was amazing. So ultimately, it's like the, the greatest thing you can do. Talent is a great thing. Tenacity in the film business is even more important. You have to be tenacious, you have to be persistent, and you can't give up. So to all the young filmmakers out there, don't give up. Try everything you can to make movies, and I hope I get to come see your films. Thank you guys for coming.